Hey YouTube, although I'm not a computer security expert, I received a phishing attempt the other day and thought it would be interesting to share with you uh, what a real phishing website looks like. It started with a text message I received late in the evening that claimed that my EasyWeb account uh, had been locked. They don't actually say who they're pretending to be, but they provide a URL which contained my personal phone number in it. Had I clicked the link, uh, they probably would have got a notification that my particular phone number was active because it was in the URL. So instead of doing that, I opened up a generic version of the same link in a VM so that they couldn't get any information from that. Loading up the website, I'm presented with a pretty legitimate looking login screen for the TD Bank. Flipping back and forth between TD's actual website and this one, we can see that they are almost identical. There are a couple changes to the text blocks in the middle at the bottom and the color of the green bar is a little bit different but at a casual glance these two websites are almost identical. The big tip off that shows that this is actually a phishing site is that it is not HTTPS, it's not an encrypted connection between you and the server and there is no certification. If we look at the legitimate uh, TD website we can see that it's traveling through HTTPS, which means it's encrypted and uh, doesn't let other people eavesdrop. And it also has a security certificate issued by Symantec. After entering some bogus information into the fake login screen, I was presented with a second screen, which is this time phishing for the secret questions and answers that you might use for password recovery. The attacker might use this against your bank account, if the details you put in in the first page were not correct or they might try it against other accounts if you reuse the same uh, security questions and answers. After filling this out with more bogus information I'm presented with yet another page. This final phishing page tries to get more information on the user such as credit card information, social insurance number, driver's license and even mother's maiden name. Using all this information the attacker can fill out his identity theft bingo card allowing them to sell your identity online. Interestingly, the only field that seems to check the content that's being entered is the email address field, which requires that an at symbol be used. All the other fields were perfectly happy to take a single digit answer, even when it was things like credit card number or name. To finish the scam, when you click the submit button, you are sent on to the legitimate TD online security page, letting you learn about how phishing scams work and how to avoid them. This is only the second time I've really got to take a good look at a phishing scam while it's under operation. And uh, I hope you guys found it as interesting as I did. And uh, I hope you stay safe and remember not to share your information online and to be mindful of the websites you visit because many of them are not what they say they are. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.